Section 4.1 talks about mass spring oscillation. It talks about a damped mass spring oscillation consists of a mass M attached to the spring. It's right there. Fixed at one end, as shown in figure 4.1. We devise a differential equation that governs the motion of this oscillation, taking into account the force acting on it due to the spring elasticity, damping friction, and possible external forces. Now, this will be explained a lot more in detail in section 4.9 actually in 4.9 we're going to derive the whole thing for now we're going to take the given equation where this m is the mass this b would be the damping force k is the spring constant And F is the external force. Now, here we're just going to take certain solutions and show they work. In section 4.9, we're going to actually work this out from scratch and derive all of this. This equation will be given nevertheless here and in 4.9. Just 4.9, you're going to have to do a lot of solutions yourself. Here, you're given the solution. Problem number two on page 156 says if the external force equal zero then this is what the equation look like if y is a solution so y if you take y times k plus y prime times b plus y double prime times m you get a zero that's what that means so is c y of t well, let's see if that's true. So it says verify the following. If I say CY is a solution. So Y is a solution, CY is a solution. What does that mean? That means if I take a derivative, that's CY prime. And if I take another derivative, derivative of this, that will be CY double prime because C is a constant. Now, if I plug those in, M, the der second derivative is C double prime plus B, and one derivative will be CY prime, and Y is really replaced by CY. Can't I factor a C out of each one of those, because that's a constant? And by definition, isn't this this isn't that a zero and if i get a zero that means it is a solution as well and that's pretty much all i have to do now come the second part now the second part reads if y1 and y2 a solution meaning if y1 is a solution that means m y1 double prime plus b y1 prime plus k y1 equals zero and if y2 is a solution that means m y sub 2 double prime plus b y sub 2 prime plus k y sub 2 equals zero basically any solution must satisfy this relation verify that their sum is a solution so if i take y1 plus y2 if i take a derivative of that so that's my y if i take a derivative of that wouldn't that be y sub 1 prime plus y sub 2 prime because take a derivative you take derivative of the first you, you you take derivative of each and you sum the result and y double prime isn't that y sub 1 double prime plus y sub 2 double prime now, if I plug those in, m, y double prime is really y sub 1 plus y sub 2. Plus b, y prime is really y sub 1 prime 
plus y sub 2 prime plus k and instead of y it's really y sub 1 plus y sub 2. Now can't I say that is m y sub 1 double prime plus b y sub 1 prime just simple arithmetic plus m y sub 2 double prime plus b y sub 2 prime plus k times y sub 2 but isn't that a zero and that's a zero so you get a zero so it does work and that's pretty much all I have to do second example verify that y equal sine of 3t plus twice the cosine of 3t is a solution to this and y of 0 and y prime y of 0 equal 1 and y prime of 0 equal 3 well let's see y of 0 assuming this is a solution is the sine of 0 plus twice the cosine of 0 I don't like how that's coming out there we go that is the sine of 0 plus twice the cosine of 0 well that's 0 that's 1 so that gives me a 2 it checks if I take a derivative that will be 3 the cosine of 3t minus 6 the sine of 3t and if I take y prime and I throw a 0 in there that's 3 times cosine of 0 is 1 minus 6 sine of 0 is 0 that will be 3 minus 0 which is 3 so it checks now what's left the initial conditions check show that this y is a solution well let's see what do I need 18 times y I need two derivatives of that the first derivative we already established it's right there it's 3 the cosine of 3t minus 6 the sine of 3t if I take a second derivative that will be negative 9 the sine of 3t minus 18 the cosine of 3t and now if I take this and I say 2y double prime plus 18 times y and y is right there I should get the right side to show that this is a solution what's the right side I should get a 0 that's negative 18 the sine of 3t minus 36 the cosine of 3t plus 18 the sine of 3t plus 36 the cosine of 3t this cancel with that those cancel each other so here again they're giving you the problem they're giving you the answer just like they did in the beginning <coughs> of this course in 4.9 you're gonna have to find these solutions yourself and how about the last problem oh I forgot to answer one more question it says find the maximum of the absolute value of y so if I look at this what's the largest this could ever be isn't that definitely less than or equal the biggest this could ever be is a 1 the biggest this could ever be is a 2 so for sure that is less than or equal to 3 the maximum it could ever be is 3 How about here? An external force of twice the cosine, so remember it's my double prime plus the by prime plus ky equal f of t. So here they say if this external force is twice the cosine of 2t is applied to the mass spring with m equal 1, b equal 0, so that's gone and k equal 4 which have an initial condition y of 0 equal 0 and y prime of 0 also equal 0 verify that y equal 1 half t the sine of 2t gives the motion of the spring all right well let's see first things first y of 0 y of 0 is 1 half 
0 times sine of 0, that's 0, that checks. If I take a derivative, and I need two derivatives, so let's take one to show this, and take another derivative to satisfy the equation. If I take a derivative, that is derivative of the first, that is 1 half times the second, plus the first derivative of sine of 2t is cosine of 2t times 2. Now, if I take the derivative and I throw a 0 in there, the sine of 0 is 0. And this is 1 times 0, that's also 0. So it does check. Now, for my equation, I need a second derivative. That will be 1 half the cosine of 2t. That should be negative, right? Uh, let me double check. No, that was the product rule. It's not. So, the cosine of 2t times 2, that cancels the half, plus the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times derivative of the second is negative the sine of 2t times 2. And that should be negative. Now, if I take y double prime, which is the cosine of 2t plus the cosine of 2t minus twice t sine of 2t plus 4 times y. y was 1 half t the sine of 2t. That will be twice the cosine of 2t minus twice t the sine of 2t. 2 divides 4 2 times. And wouldn't these two cancel out? And you left with twice the cosine of 2t, which is exactly what they have. They say, what will eventually happen at t increases? If t is increasing, and that's the solution, as t approaches infinity. So, as t approaches infinity of 1 half t, the sine of 2t, or maybe I should put it on the side, 1 half t, the sine of 2t, wouldn't that approach infinity? That means that the spring will break. And that's all there is for this section.